to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorine, and today I'm with Lisa Jackson, who is pursuing a PhD in student affairs and who is also working full time for the Center for Academic Retention and Enhancements, also known as CARE. Lisa, welcome and thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. Let's start with an introduction. All right. Um, well, as you said, my name is Lisa Jackson. I'm a senior program director here in CARE. Um, my area of specialty, uh, in addition to supporting first-gen Pell Grant eligible students in our department, is the um, uh, programming and campus support for students who've experienced foster care, homelessness, relative care, or those that are wards of the state. Um, I was uh, born in Alabama. <laughs> I was raised in Clearwater, Florida. Always wanted to become a knoll, but didn't do that right out of high school. Uh, and so um, I have lived in Colorado and California and um, then came back to Tallahassee and uh, finished a undergraduate degree here in psychology and then earned a master's degree in social work and clinical social work from the College of Social Work and uh, went on to get my uh, licensure in social work in the state of Florida and always still wanted to get that um, PhD, uh, especially now to really kind of change the narrative about my student population of interest and practice. Uh, and the College of Ed was a, a perfect fit for that. So I applied and got in and now I'm in my third year and We'll be looking forward to having the prelim behind me here shortly. Uh, and yeah, so that's a little bit about me. That's great. That's awesome. Um, so let's talk more about this, um, the population that you work with, but that you also study. Um, so the the people who, um, like, for, so you called them um, on your profile, you said you, you know, improving awareness policy and support for college students with a history of foster care alumni and or um, homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, is this a typical program in institutions or is it specific to FSU? So um, there are other programs nationally, but uh, I would say broadly speaking, uh, students who have experienced foster care or homelessness are still virtually invisible on most college campuses. Uh, there's a real lack of awareness about those student populations and how best to utilize those students' voice uh, to build programs that provide a lot of support for them uh, while they're pursuing higher ed. And so um, the, the program here at FSU is really um, kind of looked at as a, a national model for how to do that really, really well. There are great programs in Michigan. There are some really great programs um, in California. California has been doing this a while. Um, but uh, broadly speaking, this is uh, not high on a lot of people's radar. In um for your study uh, as a PhD for your PhD uh, project, that's what you study, correct? Yeah, that's definitely, and that's my area of practice and in my work, in addition to some other things. And um, and I also have been on a couple of uh, small teams of researchers who also study former foster youth in higher ed, and that will definitely be what my dissertation is on. And will you only look at FSU, or will you be looking at nationally? Um, I think I'm only going to look at FSU uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, I know it inside now, like a, a very uh, close friend and colleague of mine uh, started this program in 2012. Um, and uh, I took it over shortly thereafter and really put together the infrastructure of it. And, and the way that we have done that is a way that really leverages the student's expertise Right. Like they're the only ones who know what it is to be a student at FSU who has had those lived experiences and to let us know as an institution how we can best sort of fill in the gaps for them in a way that maybe some of their peers don't need because they have traditional family support. And so we've done that by installing a student advisory board that really helps lead the program um in a way that is meaningful for all the participants and that is um I don't know of another program in the country that's done it that way and that's 
very oriented towards social work practices, right? Um, respecting other people's expertise about their lived experiences and leveraging that to find ways to, to help get them to their goals. And so I really want to look deeply at that part because I, I think that's an important piece of why the program is as effective as it is and the students love it as much as they do. And I would like to see that replicated in programs in other institutions. Uh, and I've done that work in conferences and consulting with other institutions across the country, but I haven't seen anything in the literature about it, which makes sense if we're maybe the only people doing it that way. So I'd like to, I'd like to use that as my dissertation topic. So did the idea of pursuing a PhD came um, after you started working at CARE or did you already knew you wanted to work on um, foster care alumni and um, hum people who experience homelessness before working at CARE and that's why you decided to work at CARE? Yeah, um, I I always sort of knew I thought I wanted to go on and get a PhD. Um, I was very, very interested, even as a young child in human behavior, which led me to psychology. And then I was interested in the systems framework that social work uses uh, to really dismantle systems of oppression and, and move towards equity and social justice in a way that psychology doesn't. And so that led me to social work. And I always knew I wanted to work with emerging adults in college. And then I was partnered with um, a professor in an assistantship who studied youth aging out of this system going to higher ed. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is my population because the literature doesn't really um, dive into why the systems are not supporting these students. It was very deficit-based oriented towards the student. And I'm like, but like, if we adjust the infrastructure I really, I think they're going to do well, right? Mm -hmm. And that's effectively what the program here has done. And so um, I just knew that if I went on to the PhD at that point, it would, that's certainly what I would want to write on. And that's that's been my practice. So um, it was sort of just morphed over time. It's sort of just like a funnel got more and more refined. And then I was like, this is definitely the piece that I want to look at. And how do you manage, um, you know, being a graduate student, um, which takes a lot of time, <laughs> and working full time and being a mother? Yeah, um, I, you know, I think it's just sort of like anything else in life. Like sometimes I feel like I'm managing it all really, really well, and then sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, you know, like my husband's like, hey, it'll be great to see you for a few hours over the weekend, right? Um, uh, so I just, I really just try and prioritize as best I can and, and manage my time as well as I can. Uh, I, um, I, I'm very diligent about getting adequate sleep. Um, I stay hydrated. Um, I say no to a lot of things, you know, because I, I don't want to commit to other things, even if they interest me, because I know I'm very like, I've got too much of my plate as it is probably. Uh, so I just try and be real cognizant of that. Um, but yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm doing it well. And other times I feel like I'm kind of uh, lacking here or there, but I, I do the best I can. Do you have like a special routine where special times are dedicating to are dedicated to special tasks? Or it's kind of like whenever you have a chance, you work on whatever you can. <laughs> yeah, um, it kind of varies. I, I am I'm, I'm up early in the mornings. Um, and so I know that my best time to write are very early in the mornings or earlier part of the day. Uh, so like on the weekends or even before work, I'm normally at the office at like 630, but I might wake up at three. And so I'll get up and write for a couple of hours or do an assignment. And then I'll come into the office and start my normal day because by like three in the afternoon, like full stop executive functioning, <laughs> like I can do emails and I can do normal stuff, but I'm not, my writing's not going to be tip top. So I'm very strategic about those pieces. I do, I sort of handle it the same way on the weekends. So I'll, I'll do my academic stuff early in the day. Um, I'll have a light lunch and you know, maybe do some health stuff or go do some stuff with the, the husband and the son and the dog um, in the afternoon. And then I may have to say like by 7.30, I'm like, okay, time to go like lay down and watch a little TV. And then I'm asleep by like 8.30. <laughs> yeah. 
So. And uh, what do you like to do to relax uh, when you're not thinking work or when you're not thinking academia? Um, a, it's really hard not to think about work and academia. Like that's just my truth, right? Like even if I'm doing something else, my brain is kind of usually turning on it. Um, but I love spending time with, um, of course, my family, um, my dog. Um, we have a great Dane and he's just a sweetheart and he demands attention. Um, so uh, that helps keep my mind off of things and is very restorative. Um, I occasionally will go see like my girlfriends in town and we'll go have lunch, but you know, it's when I'm doing homework on the weekends, it's not as frequent as I would like. Occasionally we'll go to like the beach, um, that kind of thing. But really a, a lot of my time is just, um, what's the next kind of to do. So. Um, for my last question, where do you see yourself in five years from today? <laughs> Um, I see myself at the College of Social Work. Uh, I just recently accepted a specialized teaching faculty position with them. Um, so I will uh, be transitioning in August to um, full-time teaching. And then um, I uh, am also going to be still supporting care in some respects as a faculty member here, um, like kind of with summer and things. And so um, I see myself doing both of those um, and really hoping that I am helping future social workers um, who are, you know, they're, they're tasked with a lot of really big challenges, right? Our field um, has literally 13 of them um, nationally, and, and I want to help folks develop the skills to do that work and to, to really make significant changes in our country and really, you know, those that want to go into international work. Uh, so I see myself doing that and hopefully having the PhD behind me and having a little more free time would be nice. <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you so much for your time. Um, it's been lovely to talk with you and to learn more about, you know, care and about what you do and your research. Um, as you said, it's not a topic that uh, we hear a lot about. Um, I was not familiar at all with, I mean, I knew care, but I didn't know exactly um, all of the great things that you told me about. So, um, so that's great to know. So thank you so much. Thank you.